Hey guys, and welcome back to another day of Vlogmas. Today I thought we could talk through some of my most anticipated releases of 2017. Now I've never actually made one of these videos before, mainly because I never really paid that much attention to new releases. Um, I used to feel like if I opened the door to reading books right when they came out, my TBR would be never ending. However, I've also realized this year that it is a lot of fun to pick up a book right when everybody else is picking it up so that you can talk about it right when everybody else is talking about it. And yeah, I feel like it just fosters a real great sense of community, especially here among us online readers. So the first book on my list here is Harmless Like You by Rowan Hisao Buchanan. Now, I believe this one was actually published in 2016, though I'm not clear if it had come out in the States yet, but um, Regardless, W.W. Norton & Co. is putting out a new hardcover edition and I have yet to read it, so I feel like that counts. From what I understand, this is uh, a story about one family in two different generational plot lines, starting with the mother, who I believe is a Japanese-American living in New York, trying to make it as an artist, and then her son, who is trying to deal with um, basically his abandonment by her years later. Harmless Like You is a suspenseful novel about the complexities of identity, art, adolescent friendships, and familial bonds that asks and ultimately answers, how does a mother desert her son? So one, this sounds really interesting to me because of course I'm very into um, Asian female authors at the moment, especially because I'm always looking for things for April Magazine, but two, um, it just sounds like a different story that I've ever heard told about an Asian family before, so I'm down for that. I think you'll see that this is a pretty random list of things because the next anticipated release on my uh, list here is a poetry collection called Whereas by Laylee Long Soldier. I mentioned earlier in Vlogmas that I have kind of a love-hate relationship with poetry where I am very intrigued by it and I find it very interesting and yet I don't read a whole lot of uh, read a whole lot of it because it's kind of intimidating. So in the new year, I'd like to try some slightly different poetry and see if I can find like what um, poetry works for me. Apparently, Lily Long Soldier is part of the Native American Lakota Nation. Through a virtuistic array of short lyrics, prose poems, longer narrative sequences, resolutions, and disclaimers, Lily Long Soldier has created a brilliantly innovative text to examine histories, landscapes, her own writing, and her predicament inside national affiliations. I am, she writes, a citizen of the United States and an enrolled member of the Oglala Sioux tribe, meaning I am a citizen of the Oglala Lakota Nation, and in this dual citizenship I must work, I must eat, I must art, I must mother, I must friend, I must listen, I must observe, constantly I must live. So this sounds like a really interesting collection, and this was being published by Grey Wolf Press in March of 2017. Then another release from Grey Wolf Press coming out in this upcoming March is The Impossible Fairy Tale by Han Yu Ju, who is a South Korean author. I heard about this one for the first time on Jen Campbell's channel, and rather than try and explain it to you, I figure I would just read you the blurb. The Impossible Fairy Tale is the story of two unexceptional grade school girls. Mia is lucky. She is spoiled by her mother and, as she explains, her two fathers. She glows over her exotic imported colored pencils and won't be denied a coveted sweater. Then there is the child who, by contrast, is neither lucky nor unlucky. Lucky. She makes so little impression that she seems not even to merit a name. At school, their fellow students, whether lucky or luckless or unlucky, seem consumed by an almost murderous rage. Adults are nearly invisible, and the society the children create on their own is marked by cruelty and soul-crushing hier uh, hierarchies. Then, one day, the child sneaks into the classroom after hours and adds ominous sentences to her classmates' notebooks. The sinister but initially inconsequential act unlocks a series of events that end in horrible violence. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be a weird one, but I've been really impressed by the South Korean literature I've read this year, um, whether I'm talking about The Vegetarian or 100 Shadows. Um, they were all magical realist, definitely weird, um, but really, really beautifully written, so I have high hopes for this one. Then in February, Knopf is releasing Green Island, a novel by Shauna Yang Ryan. Now, I was interested in this one mainly because it says that it is set in 1947 and it um, is set over the backdrop of a changing Taiwan, specifically um, involving Chinese nationalists. I've not read a whole lot of fiction set in um, China or Taiwan and I really enjoyed Madeleine Tien's Do Not Say We Have Nothing this year, so hopefully this is um, something similar, but basically this says, uh, trapped inside the family home amid an uprising that has rocked Taipei, Dr. Tsai 
Fry delivers his youngest daughter, the unnamed narrator of Green Island, just after midnight as the city is plunged into martial law. I feel like, or I'm hoping at least, that it has a similar vibe to Do Not Say We Have Nothing, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one as well. Then, if you watched my recent Tolkien collection, this one should be no surprise to you, and that is because it is Baron and Luthien uh, by J.R.R. Tolkien. This one was found and edited by, again, his son, Christopher Tolkien, who seems to be in charge of his um, estate, and it is coming out in May 2017 um, from HarperCollins. Basically, Baron and Luthien is the story of a male human and a female elf who fall in love with each other, and I'm assuming it's kind of the basis for the Arwen um, uh, Aragorn love story uh, that sort of gets developed in the books and definitely gets overdeveloped in the films. The thing I think is going to be really cool about this specific release is that Christopher Tolkien has kind of um, created this tale of Baron and Luthien out of all of his father's like random writings in the same way that an anthropologist would kind of go through a specific culture and pull together like a folk tale. So I, I just think it's gonna be really awesome if you're a fan of Tolkien or Middle Earth or whatever, you should be excited about this. And yeah, like I said, this one comes out in May. So put it on your calendar, get ready. Then I have a nonfiction release from Icon Books, which will, will be coming out in July. And this one is called Rooms of One's Own, 50 Places That Made Literary History by Adrian Morby. This is basically an exploration of different places where literary magic happened. So if you want to know about the room where uh, Victor Hugo pe penned Les Mis, if you want to um, learn about where Truman Capote did his writing, where um, J.K. Rowling worked on Harry Potter, all of those different kinds of um, literary significant uh, locations are going to be talked about in this book and I just, I really like stories like that. I, I like that kind of behind the scenes look so this one should be pretty interesting and, and I'm looking forward to getting my hands on a copy. And then finally I have one graphic novel from Drawn and Quarterly and that is Uncomfortably Happily by Yon Sik Hong who is I believe a Korean uh, comic artist? Yeah, I've got uh, lots of Koreans on this list apparently. I'm really expecting to like this one because I read um, A Drifting Life by Yoshihiro Tatsumi from Drawn and Quarterly this year which was kind of a semi-fictionalized autobiographical comic about uh, Tatsumi's journey to be the amazing manga artist that he was and this similar similarly god that's such a hard word similarly this is um inspired by the author's own life. So let me read you the blurb. Inspired by Yang Sik Hong's attempt to move to the country with his partner, Uncomfortably Happily is the story of a young couple finding their way. Burdened by unmet comics deadlines and high rent, our narrator and his wife know they must make a change. Convinced the absence of traffic noise will ease his writer's block, our pair welcomes the idea of building a life from scratch. Deciding on a home atop an uninhabited mountain, they excitedly embrace the charms of their new rural existence. From tending to the land and attempting grocery runs through snow, to the complexities of fighting depression and seclusion, the move does not immediately prove to be the golden ticket they'd hoped for, and the silence of the mountain poses as much of an obstacle to output as the sirens of the city." So I think you might have seen a slight theme in all of these books that a lot of them deal with um, what it means to create art, kind of the artist's process or journey, and yeah, I'm just kind of in the mood for that kind of stuff right now, so these are definitely books I'm looking forward to in the new year. So if you guys are looking forward to any of these books or have read anything by these authors, and would like to share your thoughts with me in the comments below. I always appreciate that, but um, otherwise I'm done for today, I guess. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you are enjoying Vlogmas so far because we are almost at the end and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye!